Are you getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist and just can't figure out how to have the right mindset so that you feel like you can actually win this thing? Well, then you're in luck because by the end of this part two of my conversation with Mark Raffin, the negotiations ninja, you're going to know exactly what mindset to have. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung, top 1% attorney and the best-selling author of the books, Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. And I've helped thousands of people go from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into lives of freedom, possibility, and purpose. And I do the same thing for you right here in this, on this channel and in these videos. So before we go any further, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and that way you'll get notified when I upload brand new content. So if you haven't already watched part one of my conversation with Mark Raffin, you can go back and do that now. But without further ado, let's dive in to part two. Even if you don't believe that you can be confident through this or you can be better through this, you, you, get, to, you get to fake it. And I know that sounds like a a bit of a weird thing to say, but this is really important because the way that communication works is uh, there's a sender and a receiver, right? In communication. So I send you a message, you receive the message, and then you respond to me. M most people get this mixed up in confidence where they think, okay, I just have to naturally be confident through this and I don't know how to do that. But what what's shown to be true. And actually this is research that I believe uh, was done by a Harvard clinical psychologist. Her name's Amy Cuddy. I don't want to misquote her, but what she said was uh, to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing is the more confident that you act, the more confident that you will become because what happens is I act confident. That's the message that I'm sending to you. You receive that message. Then you treat me as someone who is confident. Therefore, I become more confident because now you respect me as someone who's confident. It's so true, a hundred percent. And I actually quote her in my book, "Negotiate Like You Matter," because she, in her book, one of her books, and I can't even remember which one it is now, but she actually has these power poses. Yes, exactly. Um, that you you should be doing to like make yourself feel more confident, um, and and to come across more confidently. Uh, even with your body language. And Janine Driver talks a lot about that too. And um, in several of her books, like you say more than you think and um, things like that. So, I mean, even if you feel scared out of your mind, um, using those power poses are so important, right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's been studies done on how much of your communication is nonverbal. And based on, and there's a number of disputing studies, but based on all of the research, it shows that, the vast majority of your communication is nonverbal, which is how you show up, how you act, your, your tonal inflection, all that kind of stuff matters, right? So when people say, well, dress doesn't matter, of, of course it matters. Don't 100%. be ridiculous, right? It's, it's so critical that, to that's how the it's being communicated. That's the T in my negotiate like you matter is dress to a T, one of the T's actually, um, and create powerful body language because yeah, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you know how you feel if you're sitting there wearing the same sweatpants you've worn for three days. Exactly. <laughs> like, compared to <laughs> like, you know, a really awesome new suit or a, a, right. a fabulous dress that you think you look amazing in or whatever. I mean, you know, there's entire books written on that. Yeah. So, so. I, I would say make sure that you focus on acting confident, even if you don't feel confident, because acting confident will help you to become more confident. Absolutely. And, and as I said in your show, my dad, I always quote my dad, and he's, he used to say that whatever you say, say it with authority and people will believe you. I mm. mean, Donald Trump did that all the way to the White House. <laughs> I mean, everything he says is with authority. So, and people believe him. I'm yeah. not being political. I'm just making an and, observation. And I'm, I'm, I'm also cognizant to the fact that, look, we have different biases going to, into negotiations as well, right? And so there's a, there's a big pessimism, back to your first point, there's a big pessimism bias that exists with a lot of people where we have this tendency to overestimate how 
bad the future is going to be for us, right? So, or overestimate the other person's ability to win. Exactly, and so we 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 think that we have less ability or less power than we have. And the unfortunate aspect of that is, for the people that are going into these types of negotiations, they've been conditioned to build that bias in their mind. Not to say that being overly optimistic is a good thing. Don't get me wrong, right? Because there's also optimism bias. But I think there's, there's a place for realism. And that's why the emotional aspect is so important to control. Because unless you can control that, it, it's a challenging time in your own head to get out of that situation. Yeah, 100%. And, and so, you know, for those people who just think the other side is so much more powerful and all of that, I mean, most of the time they're just really not. Um, and, and one of the things I, I want to make sure that I say is, because I've said it before, and that is that a narcissist is actually the most scared little creature on the planet. Mm -hmm. they, they actually... Uh, that's the big secret. You are actually the stronger one. So if you do your homework, um, you will be able to turn it around and shift the dynamic. So um, I always say 80% of a negotiation is won before you even walk into a room. Would you agree with me or not agree with me? 100% agree. Yeah, I think it, the, the more that you can prepare and plan and get your mindset right uh, and get the help that you need, the, the much, you're much more likely to, to win that negotiation or to get a result that's favorable, at least, in that negotiation. If, look, so many people, and I think we've probably got the media to blame for this, where we think that negotiation is some sort of gunslinger's paradise, right? We go in and shoot and ask questions later, and you know, then the bodies are lying all over the place. It's, it's not that way at all. It's, it's very strategic and formulaic and disciplined. And if you begin to view negotiation that way, then it becomes much easier for you to get the results that you want. If you go in and wing it, you're going to fail, right? It, it's, it's almost a guarantee. Maybe you get lucky once in a thousand, but the likelihood of you, you getting any great results by winging it is, is very low. And your thought process around, you know, the, the negotiation is won or lost uh, before you even get into the room. It's, it's so, so true because you've, you've got to make sure that you're prepared first and foremost you've run through all the role plays you've you've run through you know role play depositions whatever it might be that's going through in your specific case know that the better that you prepare the better that your lawyer helps you to prepare the better that you get help the, the better you're going to do always a hundred percent. I'm so glad. And I love the way you put that. What an awesome soundbite. I'm definitely using that in, in my podcast as one of my soundbites, what you just said there, because it is so good. And, and, and it highlights a point that I think a lot of people don't understand. You know, you can't, there's no magic wand. There's mm. no way to just snap your fingers and turn the process around. There's no pill that you can take. There's no anything that's going to magically turn the ship around. You have to methodically plan, put it together, create your strategy, figure out what your leverage is, create your exhibit, you know, do all of the work. Um, do your research, do your research for your side, do the research for the other side, you know, figure out what the arguments are going to be. What's your best case scenario? What's your worst case scenario? What's your risk assessment? You know, you got to go through the whole thing. That is not something that you can just be done with, with a snap of, of your fingers and turn it around and have them begging at your feet. Um, you can have them begging at your feet, but it takes work. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not without a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, you can do it though. It can, mm -hmm. you absolutely can. I mean, there is a winning met methodology. Well, and I think your course is a great starting point for that, right? Like, go, go do the work. Go read the course. Go understand the material. Know what you have to do, right? You lay it out all so well. Go, it's there. Go do it, right? It's, and it's not expensive. It's going to help you get better. It's going to help you get better prepared. And then at least you know, okay, what's coming? 
how do I need to prepare for this? It's, it's available to you right now. So go do it, go prepare. Yeah, I love that. So thank you um, for that. So you, I want to ask you this question because I love this. Um, I, you know, in researching you, um, one of the things I came across that you say very often is that negotiations come down to a human interaction. Mm. And even though you're, you're coming down to a human interaction with a narcissist, they're still a human, even though you might not think they are. Um, so what do you mean by that and how can they use that to their benefit? Know that everyone that you're dealing with is still subject to all of the potential weaknesses that other humans are subject to. You, you're still dealing, you're not dealing with, a, unless this person that you're dealing with is a, like a clinically diagnosed sociopath, then you're probably still dealing with someone who has um, stress, who has sadness, who has um, kindness even in them. And I know it's probably hard to see, but it, it's the potential for it being there is still there. And so recognize that there's, with negotiation, with everything that you're going through right now, you're still dealing with another person. And when you're going into the, the negotiation, know that you still have the ability to influence that person based on all of the biases that that you might have or another person might have. And understanding that there is bias is, is a really big deal. And, and understanding, look, there's a, there's a fear of loss here, right? We all have that fear of loss bias. So for example, we know based on research that, and this isn't research that we've done, this is public research that's available. We know that the emotional pull of the fear of loss is greater than the emotional pull of the potential of gain, almost two times as, as great, right? So if I had to say to you, Rebecca, hey, Rebecca, if you do this thing, I'll give you 200 grand. Or I could say to you, hey, Rebecca, if you don't do this thing, you're gonna lose out on 200 grand. The likelihood of you choosing option B in that circumstance is significantly higher. Because most people have this fear of loss mentality that they go into. So know that every interaction that you have is still with another human. And knowing that helps you to understand, okay, this person is still statistically, at least, susceptible to bias. They're still susceptible to fear. They're still susceptible to loss. All of those things still exist. And so I can use those as points of influence or points of persuasion in the conversation, in the discussion to ensure that I build my leverage and I build my power in that negotiation. We go into negotiations oftentimes thinking that we're less powerful or we're less, we have less leverage than the counterparty. And sometimes that's true, but we can build power and build leverage simply by understanding that these people are susceptible to these things. So do the research that's required to make sure that you know you can build your power. Oh, that is so awesome. I didn't want to interrupt, but I'm like, yes, this is good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. I love it. Okay. So I just am in the middle of reading this fantastic book by Tim Ferriss called Tools of Titans. I don't know yes, if you've read it, fantastic. but it's so good. But he uh, has every single person tell what their spirit animal is. And I thought that was such a really cool <laughs> idea that I'm, I'm starting to ask people who come on my show, what's your spirit animal? Oh, man. Uh, what would I be? I think I'd be a bear. A bear. And yeah. why is that? I... I plan. So I think bears plan, right? Bears plan for winter. They store up whatever they need to hibernate, all of that kind of stuff. So I think I'm, I'm a planner, but also I, I have the ability to uh, be vicious when I need to be vicious or um, be calm when I need to be calm. Bears are great parents. They, they raise their cubs to uh, be successful and do what they need to do to survive and succeed. And so I think for those reasons, I'd probably be a bear. I love it. Love it. And uh, what's the best book you've read lately? Uh, the best book, in fact, I have it right next to me. The best book I just finished is uh, a book called Understanding the Brain 
by John Dowling, and it goes through uh, giving you a, a breakdown of cells behavior and cognition. And it's Ooh, I'm I not a I'm not bad. a psychologist or a psychotherapist or anything like that. And so my business is to understand how people think, and I need to always upskill to determine how people's brains actually work. And so I I try to do as much reading as I can on how the brain works. And this is like a it. like science for jocks sort of stuff, which is really nice for me because most of the stuff goes over my head. <laughs> That's really cool. I love it. Okay. So where can people learn more about you, Mark? The easiest place to find more about me is on our website, which is www.negotiations.ninja, or you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on social media. Um, my target market is all B2B, so I'm on LinkedIn a lot. Uh, and we'd love for you to come over to our podcast and listen to our podcast as well. But more importantly, we really want you to be prepared uh, for your negotiations. So if you're going through a difficult time right now and you're going through trauma and you're considering going down this road of divorce, please buy Rebecca's course. Please oh, ensure you. that you are fully prepared for this um, and just make sure that you've got the help that you need. Thank you so much. And I didn't tell him to say that, but I really appreciate <laughs> we, that. We can sort out the fee for that later. No, I'm yeah. kidding. No, <laughs> no so uh, for, for all the listeners that are listening, we didn't talk about that. The reason that I'm saying that is because you need help. Um, don't, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. If someone's offering you help and it's going to help you get through this, take the help. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate being on. Thank you so much. It's an honor uh, and continue to do all the amazing things that you're doing. Thanks so much for watching this part two of my conversation with the negotiations ninja, Mark Raffin. If you like this video, give me a like, give me a share, drop me a comment. Let me know that you were here. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already subscribed, now is a great time to do that. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and that way you'll get notified when I upload brand new content. If you are getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist or with anybody, you're going to want to grab my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet. It's in the link below or just go to winmynegotiation.com and it will be all yours. If you have narcissists in your life and you want to connect with others who are dealing with narcissists so that you can feel supported, come on over and join me in my free private Facebook group. It's called Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And there's a link to that below as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. Remember that today is a great day to negotiate your best life. I will see you in the next video.